pretty crazy how something small can cause like so much damage and like I can spread from like one area to eventually a wider range and impact anyone or like anything that comes into contact with it and um, making it um, impossible to get rid of. And what I'm, re what I'm referring to are pesticides and as you can see here this is uh, with, the, um, with the spray can of pesticides with like in the year 1928 and even just by looking at it I mean it looks pretty like as it is and yeah. So like um, pesticides, um, most people know that they're used for like uh, agriculture, uh, for plant-based foods to get rid of like the, weed, the weeds, rodents, and like insects so they don't kill off the crops. Um, they could also be used uh, in buildings, um, on your lawn, or maybe in like your own personal garden. Um, yeah, so guys, um, you guys should also know that like the pesticides as, as like the ray bottle that you guys use like to kill like cockroaches or insects. And so today I want to awaken for you the multiple uh, negative effects that pesticide use has on all of us. And I'll be doing this by pointing out how pesticides can uh, affect our environment and how they could uh, like potentially uh, kill off um, aquatic animals in the ocean and how they pose a threat to our heart. Um, how they pose a threat to us as humans. And so now that you know what I'll be talking about, um, I'll start with my first point, which is uh, pesticides, um, plant-based foods can cause um, four different types of pollution, which is air pollution, groundwater pollution, soil pollution, and um, uh, yeah, I think I said that. Okay, um, so I first wanna say um, runoff is like a main, uh, it's like a big uh, problem because um, and it's caused when it when it rains or when water uh, plants because um, so like I guess so, like runoff is a main problem because like when it rains or when you water the plants um, that all water transferred to like nearby streams or to like streams and so according to the grid, the grid diet and lifestyle program a uh, webpage by Galia Colfart, um, modern agriculture with its large scale use of pesticides is responsible for 70% of water pollution in the United States. And obviously we don't know water, so 70% of water is a pretty big number. Uh, pesticides can contaminate uh, drinking water through leaking. So like with soil pollution, when you spray it on the, on the plants, uh, the pesticides get absorbed by the soil and then eventually get leaked into the groundwater that affects the water that um, people rely on to drink. And in an article, um, in an article named uh, Impact of Pesticides, there was a study done by Cole Arcane who says that during one survey in India, 58% of drinking water samples drawn from various hand pumps and wells around Bhopal were contaminated with organochloric pesticide about the EPA standards. This is obviously a problem because they're drinking water that they rely on to, that they rely on every day, uh, is being contaminated with the pesticides and these chemicals, and they're not even sure if the water that they're drinking is safe to drink. And so, this picture here basically uh, summarizes like the four different kinds of pollution. So like when you spray it, uh, it like gets stripped into the air, or like when you water it when it rains down, um, it gets uh, it goes and travels down to like the nearby streams, like I mentioned, or it drains. So now let's look the on the effects that pesticides have on animals. It's mostly like on aquatic animals because due to the runoff, and with runoff. Um, it causes, in the ocean, it causes um, algae to reproduce quick, quicker. And so once algae reproduces really fast, um, it depletes the ocean from the oxygen. So it leaves like, it leaves like none for the fishes around. And so they get really stressed and they um, eventually die because they don't have oxygen. So, as you can see here, uh, this is a picture of what happens. There's runoff. Uh, this is a uh, severe runoff chemicals into the ocean. The fish end up dying, so they're just like floating in the surface. And all the green stuff is algae. 
So, Kadeem, what did you think? <laughs> uh, the central idea was to raise awareness about the, the use of pesticides and the threats that they pose. Um, two things I thought were strong were the visuals and the statistics. I actually had all the sources, the credible sources, all that. And two things to improve, uh, I should mostly looking at on that side of the room. And I don't like it, anything else, but I thought the visual aids were very effective, especially like the fish and the, the information on how to get sprayed. And overall, I thought it was good. All right. Well, I kind of like the little 
suspense and visualization that you use for your tension device. Uh, that works pretty well. It identifies what the topic was, kind of the picture of the old school uh, sprayer that we were talking about. When you saw it, did you realize what I was talking about, trying to describe for you before? Okay, yeah. So there you go. That worked fine. Um, and we know what the topic is. That's good. The way you say the topic, you say you're going to awaken for us. That's, that's an awkward phrasing. That, you're going to awaken us too. You know, that sort of thing. So that's just a, a, a presentation grammar thing that you need to, to work on and, and be careful about. It wasn't a big deal, but it was something that I noticed. I think that you've got some, uh, you've got a lot of information in the speech. It's all cited very effectively. So I think that that's good. One of the problems, though, is because there's a lot of it, you have a tendency to read it uh, more than you want instead of talking to us quite as much as you ought to. Uh, I did think that you gave uh, pretty good explanations of some of the material. The, f the visual with the four types of pollution that you had, I think that that came after you'd already started talking about those things and it was up there a very short amount of time. It feels like it that should have come earlier, right when you're introducing what the different four types of pollution are. And I, technologically, it, you know, maybe you're not quite at the point to be able to do that. I know that I probably wouldn't be able to do that. It would be great if you had a build on that so you could talk about each one of those as they came up, and then we could see all four of them together instead of they're all four up there and you talk about them to begin with, like you get through the first two, and then you put it up, and, and then you can see what the other ones are as well. That just feels like it's a timing issue and a, and a technology issue that you could make the presentation better by fixing. It's not that it was bad, it just, you know, I'm trying to think of things that would help make your speech more effective. Um, it's primarily topically organized. There was a preview at the beginning of the speech. I thought that that was good. You, you kind of, I think I said it earlier with George and uh, I'm going to say it with you as well. I can see that you have the idea of a transition there, but it is one of those ones where it's you know, kind of mechanical that you're going through the motion and it needs to have a little bit more skillfulness getting from one point to the next. Um, it's so deliberate when you're going from one idea to the next that it, it feels a little awkward. And so that, though, that needs to be smoother. Uh, the visuals, for the most part, they're okay. Like I said, I thought the one was introduced a little late. Um, I, li I like the visual that you had at the beginning to get our attention. Uh, the one with the fish and the algae, I thought, explained the concept that you were talking about pretty well. It did feel like there was almost nothing in the last section of the speech, and you had a whole bunch of statistical information that you're presenting, um, especially about water pollution. It seemed like maybe a table chart there or graph would be something that would be useful. You had uh, several percentages that you're presenting there, and that might have been an easy way to get some of those numbers to be easy for us to remember. Um, you want to try and keep your projection level consistent. I think you, you don't quite drop off the way I was mentioning to Tim between sections, but you do have a tendency to talk quieter in some sections of the speech, and so the, the volume level just seems to drop. It, it's not like you're falling off the table, but it does feel a little bit like you're, you've hit a, an ebb in your energy, and you want to try and keep the energy level up a little bit that way. All right, thank you.